Hi everybody, this is Lila here, and today I have a special guest that's going to listen to my story. Hi, my name's Kian. Okay, so today's silly story is going to be Buttons by Brock Cole. It's one of my all-time favorite. It's extremely silly and crazy. Alright, are you ready to begin? Yes. Buttons by Brock Cole. Okay, let's begin. Once there was an old man who ate so much his britches burst and his buttons popped one, two, three into the fire. He cried. We are undone. My britches have burst and my buttons are burnt. Every one. His wife helped him to bed and then went to find the three daughters. Children, she said, a terrible thing has happened. Your father has burst his britches and his buttons are burnt. Front and back, every one. What are we to do? The three girls rolled their eyes to the ceiling, thought and thought. The eldest, a slender beauty, spoke first. I know not what course my sisters may choose, she said. I shall dress my finest clothes and walk up and down the palace bridge. Surely a rich man will fall in love with me and ask me to be his wife. But I will say, no, I can never be yours. Not unless you first give me all of your buttons. An excellent plan, cried her mother. Come to my arms, my precious child. Then the second daughter spoke up. She was tall and strong and had bright red cheeks. Mother, she said, I don't know what little sister will do, but I should dress as a boy and join the army. Surely you've noticed that a soldier's uniform has many, many buttons. I have no doubt I shall be able to spare two or three of her father. What a splendid idea! Let me embrace you as well, my darling girl, cried her mother, and then waited expectantly to hear what her youngest daughter might suggest. Are you liking the story so far? Yes, very much. Well, this girl couldn't think of a thing. She was young and rabbity and still picked her nose when she thought no one was looking. <laughs> How could she come up with, such, with a plan as wonderful as those of her sisters? Still, she screwed up her eyes and twisted her fingers until they hurt. I know what I shall do, she said finally. I'll run the meadows along the river and I'll hold my apron out so that Honey buttons should fall from the sky, I will catch them before they get lost in the tall grass. Very good, said her mother, and gave her a pat. Privately, the old woman had her doubts. But since the older girls had such marvelous ideas, it hardly seemed to matter what the youngest did. And so the eldest daughter dressed up in her finest robe and jewels, and the second put on a boy's rough jacket and leather breeches, and the youngest left off her shoes and stockings to run in the meadows along the river. And now we shall hear what happened to them all. The eldest daughter had not walked to and fro upon the bridge for twenty minutes, when suddenly a band of ruffians set upon her. They tore her gown, stole her purse, and ripped her over the balustrade so that she fell head first down, down into the river below. The 
if she is, she's falling down. Ooh. It might have been all up with her, but a handsome young barge he pulled her from the water just as she was about to drown. When he saw how beautiful she was, even with duckweed in her hair and her clothes all torn, he fell in love at once. Will you be my wife? he said. I'm going on a very long voyage through many broken to many countries to my home in Cologne, and I must be by my side or expire of a broken heart. Please say you'll be mine. All right, said the eldest sister. It seemed only decent under the circumstances. The second sister joined the army, just as she resolved. But no sooner had she put on her fine uniform with sixty gold buttons up and down the front and, the, and at the sleeves on her trousers and putties, there came a report that their country was besieged. She was ordered to the front at once. Dun dun dun. What a battle there was! Cannons roared and sabers clash. Musket shot hums through the air like a million angry bees. Was it the brave young and sign falling senseless from his horse? Yes, it was. Dun dun dun! You see. The second sister caught the inside her strong arms and carried him to the safety of a nearby cow shed. He was wounded, a flesh wound only, but it bled profusely. At once, the girl tore off her jacket and made bandages from her shirt tails. Many buttons were lost and destroyed in the process. But who could think of buttons at a time like this? When the young and sneaking to came to his senses. The first thing he saw was a golden haired young woman bending over him. Her eyes filled with concern. What a goddess is this, he thought, that holds me in her arms. Surely I must have died and gone to paradise. But no, it was only a second sister who wept tears of joy to see him recovering. For her too it had been love at first sight. That night the young couple lay snug in the straw and made plans for the future together as the sounds of battle faded farther and farther away. They talked of many silly things, babies and cottages and birds and nests, but not once did anyone mention buttons. Not once. I should write to Papa, the girl said in the morning, a letter or something. In the meantime, the youngest sister went every day to the meadow by the river and ran to and fro in the long grass. Her apron held out before her. She was her father's last hope, had he but known. Running was good exercise, and soon his youngest daughter grew strong and sturdy. So she was not as unhappy as she might have been, for the truth is that not a single button fell in onto her apron. No, not even a cufflink. It was enough to discourage a saint. But still, she got up every morning and did her best. For isn't it written somewhere that if you first don't succeed, try, try again? There's no telling how long she might have gone on, but one day a young cowherd who brought his beast down to the water morning and night stopped to watch her. At first he was merely puzzled by her antics, but then he grew to love the way her brown legs flashed through the green grass. He watched her every day for a week, and then on Sunday evening plucked up his courage and called to her as she cantered by. Pray, love, what are you doing, running back and forth like that, with your skirts a-flying and your apron all billowy? The youngest sister was quite out of breath and so was glad to stop and talk for a minute. She told him of her task and how hard she was trying. And how many buttons have you got so far? asked the young cowherd. Not one, not one of those cheap wooden ones off an old overcoat. I don't think there are any buttons up in the sky at all, she said. She sat down on a bank of crown bench to cry a bit with her pretty brown feet stretched out before her. Don't cry, love, said the young cowherd. Listen to me. Tomorrow morning, why don't you try running underneath the oak, tr the old oak tree, the center of the meadow? 
I understand there's a frequent fall of buttons there. Really? said the youngest sister, hardly daring to hope. Really, last week there was a vertible hailstorm of grass shirt studs, right beneath the place where the leaves are thickest. <laughs> Well, he had sucked away with words that the girl couldn't help but believe him. So the next morning, she did as she was told, and ran round and round under the old oak. And what do you think? Just as she ran in a thick cluster of leaves, down fell a set of used trouser buttons into her apron. Now, if you look closely, just like my guests here noticed, there is actually a hand. Right, I think. There. Yep. Okay. Let's keep going. Ow. Who can describe the joy which greeted her when she returned home? Her mother sewed the buttons and immediately into her father's riches, and the old man capered about like a child, so glad he was out, he was out of bed once more. When their daughter told them of the young cow who had helped and advised her, what could they say? They said nothing would be too good for such a wise young man, which is exactly what the girl thought, too. That evening, when he brought the beast to the water, there she was, sitting in the crown bed with the chain of daisies around her head. My love, did you get your buttons? he asked. Yes, I did, and all because of you. How can I ever repay you? The poor girl was willing to give him everything she possessed. But even that, she said, couldn't possibly be enough. I don't know, said the coward. Perhaps we should get married. For it's often said that between a husband and wife there could be no debts, but, there, but they must share all in all together. Yes, you must be right. We should get married at once, said the girl, and they kissed rapturously. Roman. And here is a picture of their wedding party. There is a bride, father, and mother. Doesn't look proud with his buttons all done up? And look at that. The eldest sister has come back from Cologne for the occasion with her bargy husband. There they are with their new baby. Don't they look happy together? And there is the sister with the bold ensign. Aren't they a handsome couple? Why, they look strong enough to win a war all by themselves. But of course, no one is as beautiful as the bride. There she is, right in the middle of the picture. And the clever coward, well, he's very good looking too. That's him next to her, with the trousers tied up with a bit of string. He doesn't seem to have enough buttons, but she doesn't care. It's a small fault. It seems to run in the family. the end i hope you guys enjoyed this story with me lila and my guest kian and um we'll see you next time at story time bye bye lila ruth